We know there are many choices in Internet radio and the staff and host of L.A. Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is L.A. Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Okay, America, wake up. It is about that time once again. Welcome, world, to an all-new episode of the New Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. This is the radio boardroom in full session again tonight at 5 p.m. in our all-new time slot, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. This show is all about motivating you to get up and start your own entrepreneurial endeavor. Remember my motto, anything you do, eight hours a day, five days a week, you can eventually master. I know that to be true, so why don't you choose to be the master of your own dreams instead of continuing to be a cubicle slave of someone else's. This show is here to inspire you, to empower you, to instruct you, to inform you, to put you on the path to get off your assets, in the immortal words of Adelia Johns, to get off your assets, to start, build, flourish, and retire in your own entrepreneurial endeavor. I am your humble host, Richard Carr, and joining me this week, we've got another incredible lineup of incredible minds. We've got joining us tonight, the billionaire PA himself, billionaire PA, live in the building, speaking dreams into existence, billionaire PA representing wealthy minds. We've also got our returning champions, Miss Toshanta Hogan of Sensational Soaps, official sponsors of the New Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit and the only soap to touch my body. And we've also got the return of Mr. Chamberlain Duru. LAX Coastal Area Vice President of Membership Services, Chamberlain Duru, joins us here in the radio boardroom on our day of tonight. Be sure to stay tuned. Tonight, we are going to be broadcasting from our Chicago, no, check that, our New York Talk Live com affiliate. That means I want all of you to go to www.NewYorkTalkLive.com. That's NewYorkTalkLive.com to tune in to tonight's show. You can go to LA Talk Live, Boston Talk Live, Chicago Talk Live, St. Louis, Houston, Seattle, Miami, New Orleans, uh, Philadelphia, D.C., and uh, I don't know, I may have missed one, Tampa, and Oakland for that matter. Or you can go to America Talk Live if you're listening to us from abroad. You'll see us in live and living color. You see me now. Hello, world. Uh, I'm your humble host once again, Richard Carr. We've got a great show lined up for you. We're going to get you on your feet and moving in the direction of self-empowerment, self-actualization to start, build, and flourish in your own business. Call your friends. Tell them to tune in tonight. Again, broadcasting to you through our New York TalkLive.com affiliate. We're about to take a quick break. I'll come back after the break and introduce my panel of guests tonight. We're also very anxiously awaiting the arrival of a very wonderful woman that I met last week on a couple of uh, other shows that air here. Her name is Sharita Herring. I'm so hoping she shows up because she talks all about the money and how to get it. So, again, great show lined up straight ahead after these quick very important commercial messages you're intelligently tuned to the new entrepreneurs weekly summit we'll be right back right after this do not go away Hey, this is Richard Carr, General Manager for LA Talk Live and host of the New Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. I wanted to take a moment out to welcome one of my newest sponsors, and that is Sensational Soaps. Sensational Soaps are handmade with all natural ingredients, with absolutely no preservatives, no harsh chemicals, and of course, no animal testing. Your body will look and feel silky, smooth, moisturized, and completely revived. Do you suffer from dry, ashy skin? Then layer your skin with their luxurious blend of oils and shea butters specially formulated to revive dry, dull skin. Sensational soaps 
also offers a full line of bath and body products, including luxurious bath salts and body scrubs, massage oils and lip balms, even romantic gift sets and custom gift baskets for your lover or significant other. For more information or to place an order, visit them at www.sensationalsoaps.biz. That's www.sensationalsoaps.biz. Sensational Soaps. Pamper yourself and indulge your senses. Sensationalsoaps.biz. Proud sponsors of LA Talk Live and the new Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. Journey Sisters is an organization that embodies and captivates women from all walks of life. Our membership includes 44 women that are constantly growing in the areas of personal development and community involvement. Monthly, we offer free leadership classes at McCade's Restaurant. Journey aims to inform women in the areas of heart disease and HIV and AIDS. Experience the journey now by logging into www.journeymosaicinc.com. Dot com. Toll free 888-906-5519. Journey with no excuses. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the new Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit, heard Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. In the background, you're listening to a, a song I thought about today when I was in the shower on my way to the show today, mapping this show out. We've got a major election about to take place in our society on November 6th and we're doing some really big things here on LA Talk Live to get people ready to get on the train for what is about to happen next in this country. I'd like to welcome you back to the New Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit and welcome you at home uh, listening to us from abroad in over 150 countries or here locally in Los Angeles or in this case in New York City tonight. We're broadcasting from our NewYorkTalkLive.com affiliate. So go to www.NewYorkTalkLive.com. Our show tonight, I'm going to set the table because, you know, I've heard a lot of ramblings lately about the so-called failure of our illustrious president, Barack Obama, during the last debate that he had with Mitt Romney, would be wannabe president, right? And I want to put that on the table tonight as we proceed through our show. Now, we're not going to wax political. We've got enough shows on this network to address that. But tonight, I've got an illustrious panel of guests that I like to put the question to. And I thought this song was most appropriate. If you thought the election of 2008 was important, well, you better believe that this one in 2012 is even more so. And what it's really all about is us continuing the work of change that Barack Obama started in this country. So people, get ready. There's a train a-coming. You hear me? Don't need no ticket. And in Pennsylvania, you don't even need a photo ID <laughs> to vote. There's a train a-coming. All you need is faith to hear the diesels humming. Uh, there's room for all. Um, to get on that train and take our society to the next level. Now, you know, I'm in this spirit tonight and I feel so politically oriented. But again, we're not going to make this a political show. But I feel thus so because I watched a documentary last night called Capitalism, an American Love Story by the great Michael filmmaker Michael Moore. And after watching this documentary, and of course, I watch a lot of news and sports. Won't talk about sports got several shows to cover that topic but after watching that documentary last night capitalism and american love affair it 
stimulated this notion in my mind that, and, and, and in fact, for that matter, at the end of the movie, uh, Michael Moore, a very upfront, direct, and no holds bar filmmaker, gave Barack his props for what he has achieved in the four years he's been in office. Okay, so now, you know, you got Mitt Romney and you got this other guy, Paul Ryan, who are both running for and would be leaders of the free world. And I watched a portion of the Joe Biden. Um, uh, I just forgot the guy's name that fast. Paul Ryan debate. Well, yeah, Paul Ryan debate. And, you know, of course, we knew what Joe was going to do. Um, he knocked him out the box, in my opinion, because, you know, you've got a guppy dealing with a big fish when it comes to Joe Biden and politics. But again, after watching this this documentary last night, it made me realize something I've been saying for a long time on this show. And that is power in this country is truly in the hands of the people. We elect our politicians. We elect our representatives. We elect our Congress. And despite all of the bad news you hear about what Wall Street has done and how um, corporate America and the one percenters have taken over uh, Washington. There is a movement afoot in this country for those of you out there who, like my parents and like some of the parents of the panel who sit with me tonight and many of your parents, got off their assets and made change in America. I watched in this documentary how one family stood up against the bureaucracy and the tidal wave of home foreclosure that took place in recent years, stood up against the deputy sheriff's department in Florida and said, we're not, after being evicted by the sheriff's, and with the help of their community, went back to their house, reoccupied it and squatted in it and took the house back from the bank. I watched a company in Detroit, in Michigan, maybe not quite in Detroit, in Michigan, in this documentary, whose workers at a small windows plant had been laid off, fired and dismissed summarily with no pay no severance nothing and how those same people went back to that factory in Michigan right outside Detroit and occupied it for a number of days maybe 30 or more because the owners of that business had sold the business out spent all the money uh, depleted the business of all this uh, of all of its resources and then found themselves having to close the business. And right about the time they closed this business and, and summarily laid off all the workers with nothing to go away with, B of A got a bailout from the government. So the people in that company decided, well, if B of A can get a bailout, why can't we as individuals? So they occupied the plant for some 30 40 days, and sure enough, B of A decided to retroactively pay all of the workers what they had been denied when the company shut down. This is, as my logo states about this show, our frickin' turn. And part of the fact that it's our turn means that we must take responsibility in this country to turn it around ourselves. Yeah. It is we, the people, who are the power. And at the end of this documentary, you see this incredible man who, for me, I thought I'd never see in my lifetime, a black president, stand with the workers of that factory in Michigan and say, I'm with you. And that's what helped make this change. We've seen him campaign on the idea of change. We've seen unemployment now at an all-time low since I got laid off in 2009 at below 9%. What is it, 8.7? Mm -hmm. I asked the question last week. Is it because more people are taking their own fortunes and futures into their own hands and starting their own business? I think that's a part of it. Is it because 
things are getting better in this company, in this country, in this company as well. That's a part of it, too. Um, the fact that this man stealthily went out and took out one of the world's most heinous um, terrorists, Osama bin Laden, stealthily, and yet we doubt him during the debate. So I can't wait to tomorrow night for the next debate. I'm on a rant tonight. I'm real <laughs> juiced up about this. Yeah, amazing, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't warn anybody before I got started on this tangent. The Richard Carr I'm show just off Richard on Carr. a tangent tonight about all of the naysayers about our illustrious president who say that he failed during the last debate. Well, it's our turn, people. It's time for us to take this country into our own control and change the way things are done here. And he's the man to do the job. And I'll I'll say this one last comment. Then I'll calm down and shut up. Barack Obama pulled what I called a rope a dope or Mitt Romney la uh, the last debate, meaning that just like the amazing Muhammad Ali in the ring with the most formidable boxer in the world at the time, George Foreman, who was knocking Joker's blocks off. Muhammad Ali created what was known as the rope -a And I really truly believe that Barack Obama, in his mannerisms last debate, pulled the rope -a And in this coming debate, will knock his head off. We have got to stand behind this, get behind it. Even if you aren't behind Barack, get out and vote. We'll be talking about that later in the show. But the most important thing to me tonight is to talk about what is coming up next from a business perspective in this country and how we as entrepreneurs can take back control of what happens to us mm -hmm. so we're no longer victims. They dated this tragedy, I'm going to call it, back to the Reagan era. And even though Reaganomics has been purported to be this incredible system of economics for America, you know, you hear a lot of people talking about the good old days of Ronald Reagan. You hear a lot of political pundits talking about Reaganomics. Man, I remember Reaganomics. It was terrible. And it showed how Ronald Reagan became the first puppet of corporate America to turn the tide for the average American, black, white, whatever race, whatever creed, whatever color, to what we have today where we're the victims, we all are. And we live in this victim mindset of America. I'm on a rant tonight, and I will be up until November 6th to make change in this country. As you might notice, I'm growing out my hair. I'm going to grow my hair into an afro to make <laughs> as, a, as a pledge to see that we, the people, take back control of our lives and our country so we can stop complaining about what's going on in this country today. So I've set the table. It's a buffet tonight <laughs> i'm very charged up i'm sick of hearing all these people talk about how barack obama failed in the last debate i'm sick of hearing us complain about america and what's wrong with it i'm ready to turn the tide who is with me well let me tell you who i've got in the studio i've got chamberlain duro vice president of membership services for the local or lex coastal area chamber of commerce joining me how you doing man I'm charged up. I'm angry. Fired up. I'm sick of it. <laughs> and I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I've also got the first lady of the radio boardroom, Miss Toshanta Hogan, CEO, founder of Sensational Soaps, official sponsors for the New Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit and LA Talk Live. And I have the return of a gentleman that I met several times several months ago in this studio, a young brother representing the youth movement of change in this country, the billionaire PA of Wealthy Minds speaking dreams into existence, joining us here on our dais tonight. We are hoping for the arrival of Miss Sherita Herring uh, to join us, future councilwoman Sherita Herring to join us later in the show. Man, I'm sick of it, man. I can't take it anymore. I feel you, man. I mean, um, who of us will step up? Uh, well, we were talking. We were talking a little bit before we came into the show, uh, and it is political season. And personally, the debates are nothing but debates. 
you know, the person who's running for office will always have more to say than the one that's already in office. You know, if you're already in office, you know, you know what the real deal is. You know, everybody has a lot to say until you're sitting in that seat and they open up the books for you, the United States of America. But, you know, I'll never gauge vote for somebody because they do well in, in a debate. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not going to judge Barack Obama um, based upon how he does in the next debate. I'm going to judge him over what he's done over the last four years. Now, as, as, as any other candidate, you know, he's a politician. You know, he makes promises. And he's voted in office to deliver on those promises. Um, I think what got you fired up is, you know, people saying that that he that he failed in the debate, that he's not being presidential, that he's not doing, that he's he's not carrying himself in that champion kind of a uh, champion kind of kind of mode that we all expect of him that we've seen from him in the past. And I, I do agree with you that he'll come out more fired up in the next debate. But I'm not. That shouldn't be the whole thing that you use to to, to judge his president. You know, I think what we're talking about now is going forward. Everybody agrees he had the rawest deal in the history of, of the United States coming into office. Terrible. He had the rawest deal ever. I mean, he he dealt with issues that were unprecedented mm-hmm. that in in our in our in our in our country. And the overall question you must ask yourself is, you know, are we better off today than we were in January of '09? And I think the overall answer would be yes. We are much more secure. We're, we're safe. Nothing's happened. Um, We've uh, we've stabilized the economy for the most part. It's a growing the way we wanted to grow. No, but we didn't get into this disaster overnight. We're not gonna get out of it overnight. Uh, the people need to have a little bit of, of wherewithal and and manage their expectations and manage their own personal economies, which is why we're always talking about you know becoming more self reliant and becoming more empowered. Wait a um, minute. Repeat that. Managing your own Personal, personal economy. economy, right? Mm-hmm. Love that. Yeah, and I've always, what I've, I'm talking I've about. always said that. I mean, you know, all I expect from my president or any elected official is one, is to keep me safe as an American, two, be responsible for my tax dollars, and three, uh, give me an opportunity that I, that I wouldn't have otherwise. You know, and that's it. And maybe look out for me a little bit if I if I if I fall and if I can't take care of myself, give me an opportunity, give me a safety net to where I can. You know, sustain, and then until I get back on my feet. That's that's really the whole role of government. And mm-hmm. It's to take care, take care of people who can't take care of themselves for a certain period of time, protect from all enemies, foreign and domestic, control the balance balance of budget of America, and invest in, in things that uh, that will help our economy and our society going forward. I think what the what the big I think if there's any kind of shakeup within the Barack Obama camp right now, or people who are on the fence. Is that they're just they're just not seeing the growth. They're not seeing you know um, what they were promised, and it kind of and it kind of goes to if you're sitting at home and your phone has it wrong and you're unemployed and you're feeling and you're feeling that like you haven't that you're that you're personally worse off than where you were in 2009. That's the president's fault. You know if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you weren't if you're not where you were before, that's the president's fault. And so it's Mitt Romney's job to create doubt. That's what, he's, that's what he's supposed to do when you run for office. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to knock off the incumbent. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to say that, hey, you know, this guy's doing his job. The economy is doing this. Unemployment is doing that. And you're trying to create an argument to why you're better than this guy is. I think I think he's done a poor job in promoting himself and versus not versus knocking, knocking on the guy that's uh, running for office. But that's just politics. That's just politics. So if he creates enough doubt, it's like a defense attorney. If he creates enough doubt in the eyes of, of America— to why the, the president isn't fit to do the job anymore, whether it be health care or any other issue uh, on the table, then that's his, that's his job. That's his role as the Republican nominee is to win the race. And we don't see too many ads here in Southern California because it's a Democratic state and always has been for the most part. But in those battlefield states like Ohio and Nevada and Virginia and Florida, it's, it's, on the, it's on the fence. It's on the fence. I think... Part of what I'd like to achieve tonight in our dialogue, I know, you know, you know, we all know we're here to talk about entrepreneurship. And as a business owner, this is a very important election to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Part of the legislation and law, part of the thing, many of the things that Barack Obama enacted for me being a laid off individual during the debacle of our economy of 2009 and throughout helped me build the business because of some of the decisions and laws he enacted. 
Um, I think one of the things we w- I want to achieve tonight, at least from some of our dialogue, is to look at what the world is going to be like post-2020. 12 election time if it's a Barack uh, presidency or a Biden I'm I'm sorry not Biden but a Ryan Romney presidency and one of the things about that whole uh, debate issue to me was that when I look at Barack Obama's demeanor during the debate I, I kept thinking to myself you know me and two other me and one other kid are standing before the teacher in class and we got caught you know slap boxing in class or goofing <laughs> off when the teacher ran out for a moment and we come back <laughs> and both of us are standing before the teacher now he started it i didn't and he's been starting it on a regular basis i've always been you know just chilling and this guy comes and starts to trouble to me, I look at Mitt, uh, at Mitt Romney and, and Barack Obama's demeanor during the debate as Barack feeling the need to stand there and continue to, and someone else mentioned this, one of the politicals mentioned this, to you know, say, this guy's lying, this guy's lying, this guy's lying repeatedly. I think, uh, again, one of the most important things we can accomplish tonight during this discussion about business and the new era that's coming in 2013, is that it is important uh, how a candidate handles themselves in a debate, and more importantly, who in fact steps into that position as our next president. We've got to get charged up about this and look at it seriously for what it's worth in order for us to charge up our community of voters to get them out and recognize the value of voting especially during this election, which I think is even more important than the election of 2008. I hear some of the things you said, young brother, Mm -hmm. about, well, you know, might be a debate. I don't really put much credence on that. Um, I wouldn't either because, again, I really kind of look at Barack in that demeanor saying to himself, like, I'm not going to keep standing here and pointing out how much this guy is lying Mm -hmm. and how weak and fake he is. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to lay back and let that happen. I believe the rope dope is about to take place tomorrow night. I mentioned that earlier on in the show. But I think it's really important for us to really get charged up about what's taking place in this country, what's taking place in this next election. Charged up to the point where we kind of see past the bullshit that is happening with this debate and, you know, really take that very seriously. Well, Am I off on a tangent here tonight? No, and I'm gonna make sure I get the other people in here real quick. <laughs> yeah, here. Let, 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 me, let me just quick say that you know I'm I'm with you. It's always good to get, get people out to vote. You know that's that should be something that we should all take with great privilege, especially for African American because we've only had this right to vote for a couple of decades. You know, um, but um, I don't know. With, with me, I I want people to be educated and find out. You know, these are the, the top three things that matter to me. If it's education, if it's the environment, if it's if it's the economy, if it's small business entrepreneurship, whatever, if it's going green, schools, whatever. What are your what are your top issues that matter to you the most? And to find out where the candidates stand on that. You know, with with the debate, you have a whole lot of personality, a whole lot of one liners, a whole lot of, you know, you know, it's it's T V. Nothing everything is scripted. They have the questions before they even come out. They they know everything they know. What the other candidate says, I mean, it's, it's, it's not going to be any anything on there that's going to be said that hasn't been said before. They're just saying it to, it to each other. They know the questions before. It's not like it's impromptu. They know what's going to happen before it happens. That way, it's like, so it's like a TV show. It's all scripted. So that's why I don't, I don't put a whole lot of emphasis on it. I mean, it, it's, it has, you know, it has some value for people who think that, you know, I'm the I'm next president, depending upon how they do in the debate. But I'm looking at Romney on his record. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at Barack Obama on his record uh, and what and what he wants to do kind of going forward. You know, the Democratic Party is about big government. My, so this, is, this is the only thing that kind of holds me back is it, big government can't grow an economy. That's just that's just economics. You know, at the same time, private enterprise has proved that it can't be it can't be sustaining without being, it being regulated. So it comes down to which which side of the fence do you do you stand on? If you're if you're a black business owner. Now, 
it's this is the interesting conversation that I've had a couple of times with people who are own successful up and coming companies that are over 50 employees or so because their passion is Barack Obama. If you look at it from a business standpoint, I don't know. Maybe toward maybe the Republicans may maybe what you want to do in terms of taxes and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I want to hear from. I want to hear from black business owners who, you know, if they weren't business owners, will probably go Barack Obama, but they're gonna vote their pocket. So that's that's when it becomes politics. And so I, people will always vote their self interest. That's what I've learned. That's what I've seen. They're gonna vote their self interest. And I'm so sorry I took us a break without bringing it to Sean to a millionaire. Because I'm oh, still doing my research. Right. You weren't here last week. I missed you it. You missed last week. Uh, so I wanted to get your side of the story. And you know, for all of our listeners out there, I'm real charged up about this election thing. I'm very passionate about this. Mm-hmm. You know, coming from the 60s and for the first time in my life, seeing a black man as president mm-hmm. uh, first time in all of our lives for that matter in America but with a mindset that I'd never see it this is a very very important time for us not just individually but when it comes down to business it's not just the unemployed and those who are on on unemployment who got unemployment payments who started mm-hmm. businesses right. there are people out there who are starting businesses now with their own money yeah with government grants, with private grants. Uh, We have one in the studio with us tonight. We've got the billionaire PA of Wealthy Minds speaking dreams into existence, www.wealthymindsclothing.com. We've also got the first lady of the radio boardroom, Miss Toshanta Hogan, joining us, who have both been very patient. (laughs) So after the break, we're going to hear from them. Be sure to stay tuned. You're intelligently tuned to the new Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. We are in the radio boardroom. We are now in session. Do not go away. Stay tuned for these very important messages, and we will be right back. We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and hosts of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hey LA, are you getting out to vote on Tuesday, November 6th? I know I am. This is Lady J of Lady J's Wild World of Sports and I'm joining my family right here, LA Talk Live, and encouraging the citizens of Los Angeles to get out and vote on Election Day. As you know, this is one of the most important elections in our American history and we need everyone in LA to register and have a voice on November 6th. Currently, the state of California, the state we live in, has 6.5 million people eligible but not registered to vote. And about half of those voters live in L.A. County. Mm, mm, mm. So I'm joining the family here at L.A. Talk Live and encouraging you to register and vote on Tuesday, November 6th. And if you haven't yet registered, don't worry. You have until midnight on October 22nd. And you can now even register online. So there is no excuse. That's right. If you have a signature filed online with DMV or a state ID number, you can now register to vote at registertovote.ca.gov. And don't forget to join us here on Tuesday, November 6th for L.A. Get Out and Vote, our live election day coverage from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., where we're going to keep you tuned in exclusively to L.A. election news and poll coverage all day right here on my station, L.A. Talk Live, where we are more than just talk. Okay. Hey, this is your girl, Paris, straight from the Cousins, and you can join us every Monday at 8 p.m. Here live, bringing you some great entertainment for those ears, exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream.tv, reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. 
Hey, what's up? It's your girls, Forbidden Gems, inviting you to join us every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. sharp for the hottest live talk show, Forbidden Tuesdays. Join us as we expose the new generation of love and dating and help y'all run the game right. Ladies beware, fellas bring out your notepads. So don't forget to tune in to Forbidden, Forbidden Tuesdays. Tuesdays exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio RB or watch us on Ustream TV. This is LA, LA Talk, talk Live. Live. And we are more than just talk. You, you ready? ready? Yeah, you can. I'm real charged up tonight here in the New Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit Radio Boardroom. I am your humble host, Richard Carr, joined by Mr. Toshanta Hogan, Mr. Chamberlain Duru, and the billionaire, P.A. himself. Before the break, you heard my rant about what's going on in America. I might have been all over the place with that rant because I tell you, man, I got so charged up from the documentary that I saw from Michael Moore last night, um, Capitalism. An American love affair. And man, it just blew me away to see how we have become the victims. That 47%, I think, Mitt Romney mentioned who don't care and who don't vote and who don't engage and who don't get involved. Well, we're about to show you a whole new game come November 6th. Mitt Romney and all you want to be would be fake as presidents. <laughs> I'm voting for... My president, the illustrious Mr. Barack Obama. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Of course, we got to bring the other guest. Just real quick. Go. Well, you're obviously obviously pro Obama. Something tells me you're pro Obama in a big way. But do you think do you think that you being so pro Obama, you may have fans out there, black or otherwise, who may be Republican? I know that I do. So do do so do you think that I'm not and I'm not saying this is your show. You run the way you want to run it. That's a but, show, well, but but do, but do you think that you somewhat alienate them or discourage them? From, I would hope from not. What I would want to do is encourage pain? them to call in to the studios of LA Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network by dialing three two three two four seven seven four four three. Again, three two three two four seven seven four four three. I don't mean to alienate anybody. Okay. I want to tonight stimulate some um, dialogue and discussion about what business is going to be like in America in the in 2013, in the next year. Been on the planet for a little while. Certainly went through my ups and downs. Have had more than one business. There's never been an economy that I've lived in that has been this business friendly. And it's not just because of my own personal success, because, again, I still have my ups and downs. But... Because of the very many people that I have met who've walked through these doors into this broadcast broadcast booth to talk about their successes as individual entrepreneurs. Now, if Barack Obama was green, white, brown, blue, yellow, that a change has come in our country. If, in fact... Hillary Clinton, which I think is about to be the next president for this country, a woman, if, and I don't know that it's going to be Hillary, but, and I hope it's not Sarah Palin, but if it was a woman who initiated, if it was a woman who had gained the momentum that Barack gained by the time the election took place, I would have, I would be just as happy and just as celebratory that finally a change had come to this country, a change that despite race, color, creed, or sex, I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. So, yeah, I'm very pro Barack Obama. And no, I don't want to alienate anybody in expressing their views. And yes, I certainly have my right to Mm -hmm. express my views on our show. It ain't just my show. Right. Feel me? Yeah. Because it could be all Ricky all night. <laughs> <laughs> I would need no co hosts and guests. Because uh, I asked that question because, I mean, you know, and I hope it's question to the panel that, you know, it's like we discuss not enough discussion on, on the policy that's being presented. You know, everybody's everybody's kind of uh, everybody's kind of hung up on, you know, the personality or the debates. But how much, you know, how much policy do you know? I mean, what, what do you what do you what do you know? 
that's, I, that's being introduced from from the candidates that that triggers your that triggers your uh, interest. I, Hold on, first lady. <laughs> let me give you an official introduction. This is Mr. Shanta Hogan, uh, CEO and founder of Sensational Soaps, an official sponsor of the New Entrepreneur Fifty Seven. Welcome to the show. We were just speaking off panel, and politics is such a touchy subject. And no, they're not. Let's talk about it. It is. <laughs> I um I don't talk politics well, on Facebook and it. so forth. Um. um just for my own personal beliefs, and I'm sure my fans are out there listening and want to know what I feel. My thing is this. It's pretty much very simple, um, and I told this to um, my friend here that um, it's all about what has that person done. Um, we have the president that's in office. What did he do the last four years compared to this person here who's going to say what he planned to do that you know, we don't know what he's going to do as a president. However, we can look back and see what he has done as a gover governor of his state and see what, you know, what it's about. And pretty much it's all about what it is. How is it going to benefit you individually? How is it going to um, impact the lives of people in the future, whether it's your kids, your, you know, how is it going to impact the lives of the of your grandparents with Social Security, right, Medicare right. Yeah, uh -huh. and so forth? Um, and. That's just your own personal belief. Is it going to benefit you? It's almost like making a business decision. Mm -hmm. When you're in business and you're trying to collaborate with someone, we want it, we want it to be a mutual collaboration. It's going to benefit you. It's going to benefit me. And we can make something happen and grow together. It's not going to just be all me and I'm doing everything and you're just sitting there chilling. No, it's going to be it's going to have to it has, it has to make sense whether, you know, I think that what happened was four years ago, we all got excited. Oh, my God, Barack Obama. He's black. Check. And that was it. That's great. But now it's time to really look at what has he done and, um, you know, his his past. And what is is Mitt Romney ha, um, has done as being a governor? Let's check the facts. Let's do our research as a people and see what's best for each of us individually, business side as well as personal. I'd like to take a moment out now to introduce uh, the CEO and founder of Wealthy Minds, Billionaire <laughs> PA, who has been so patient. Uh, and I see he's chomping at the bit. <laughs> so let's get him on the mic. What's up, billionaire? What have you been up to lately, young brother? Man, too much faith. Too <laughs> much faith. Too much faith, you know. Like Obama said, you can never have too much faith no matter what you're going through, what your trials and tribulations is in life. Speak your dreams into existence. That's what I've been up to, man. It's been good, man. You know, I uh, just released my video, Too Much Faith, and my music name is Wealthy Minds. Congratulations on that, young brother. Great video. I have the video up, in fact, but I'll be playing the song itself because we've played it here several times on our network in support of what you represent in my mind as being the youth movement of positivity in a nutshell. Yeah, Young yeah. brothers, difficult uh, background, difficult upbringing, perhaps, present company excluded, I don't mean to put your business out because I don't know it. But we have a lot of young brothers and sisters in the hood and they seem to keep making this excuse that the reason I'm so hood is because I was raised in the hood and the hood is what, I, what I'm all about and I don't know nothing else and that's all I'm going to represent. Where here's a young brother who raised in similar circumstances at least, to say the least, yes? Oh, absolutely. Right? Who now represents this whole positive movement about speaking your dreams into existence. Now, I want to go back to an event you did earlier this year where you had a dream board event and had people come out and support you, your ideas, your concept, your company, and their own ideas and concepts for an event you did at your own location, the headquarters of Wealthy Minds. Let's talk about it. Well, Many people that know me and follow me know that I created what we call it. Uh, it's a dream wall. And it's basically to encourage people to first, you know, speak your dreams into existence. And so you write your dream and you come like people come from like uh, I've had people come from Peru, Afghanistan, Africa. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, all over the country, man, just to come and put their dreams on the wall. And, you know, um, we just watch them execute. That's what I am. I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people that I don't really like to talk as much as I like to execute. So when you, if you open up my dictionary, the only word that's in it is execution. And when them people walk in there and put their dreams on the wall, 
just speaking the dream into existence is a part of it. You know, the bigger part is now you got to take actions and, you know what I'm saying, Execute. just be a man of your word. So speaking about what you guys were speaking about earlier, like they say, some people say it's a very tough, tough touchy subject but i just roll with the president that executes i'm not really into the talking that's right I, 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 that's I'm, very I'm, simple I'm very <laughs> i'm very 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 motivated to ask you who that might be but i will wait i mean i mean it's okay question. my, my grandma you want to answer go right ahead uh, my grandmother always told me that um you sh- you could be able to explain a definition of a person and you know exactly who it is and you know who the president is that is executed I think that goes without saying. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're speaking about politics and business in 2013 in a nutshell. Um, Earlier on in the show, I talked about some of the things that I witnessed in a documentary uh, that I thought Michael Moore did a really great job of in bringing forth what really took place in about 2008. Really, that started in 1980 with the election uh, 79 actually with the election of Ronald Reagan and of course his inauguration in 1980 and how corporate America uh, was uh, well we were served up to corporate America on a silver platter like here they all are here are your slaves uh, and you know do what you wish with them and of course we see the economy that eventuated from that era both from Re- uh, Reaganomics and the Bush era and then the other Bush era, people often think of Bill Clinton as being the first black president. Wrong. He was not. He is white, first of all. So we know he's not the first black president. And I mean, I know that people make light of that um, and say that flippantly, but it's as if Bill Clinton was the first president who had a deep interest in what our community as black people in America needed. And I still don't think that that is a proper depiction of Bill Clinton. He's doing a great job now campaigning uh, for Barack Obama. I think Bill is probably the closest thing that we as a race of people in this country would have gotten to someone sympathetic to our needs and demands. The fact of the matter is Bill also was a part of what created this financial debacle that eventually or eventuated in our time in the new millennium coming from my era, I remember in the mid 80s, late 80s, early 90s, at, at the worst, the savings and loan collapse and how deeply implicated both Bill and Hillary were in the Whitewater scandal that many of us forgot about. So as much as Bill has done what he's done and is doing what he's doing, fact of the matter is, for me, when I look at where business is going to to be for the last of us. You know, I kind of look at this as a period of time when the first had become last, the Madoffs, and, you know, all of these other corporate giants, the AIGs, all of these people may not be last in line now because, of course, some of them walked away with their wealth, but the fact of the matter, they've been shamed and brought down, and now we see behind this corporate veil that we have the same possibilities Mm -hmm. and opportunities um, that they had if we take our own fortunes and futures into our own hands and stop believing that they are this mega power that we can't fight against. Well, that's okay. So it's one thing that I'm very sensitive to and weary now as I get older and start to read more and paying attention. Is that is that the fact that people try to put. They tried to create these 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 teams like like I'm against this, and like you know it's, you have every, everybody gets the corporations and you have Republicans against Democrats and then you have and then you have um what's the number business versus Wall government Wall Street against Main Street right I mean stop Division. it I mean stop yeah. it this is this is this is all America mm-hmm. there is no bad guy and I this is just my personal it's just my personal thought there is no bad guy it's just what again it goes well, about it, go, it goes to guys, it goes to where you stand you individually and what's best right. for you okay you know if, if but you, i'm the good guy <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna do what's these these everybody was, was chasing the same dollar yeah. he said capitalism right yeah. capitalism capitalism is what got america to be the great superpower it's also what keeps us from what, what <laughs> it's type also, of superpower also what, huh? has america become as a result of capitalism 
Right. It's just it's like you it's like you want you to go out there but and be, what and be type an entrepreneur. Of superpower because you're skirting the question, no, no, there, young fella. What what separates America from every every other country is the strength of our middle class. It's the strength of our middle class. And where know? is our middle class now? It's it's being it's it's, it's tough Decimated. right now. It's it's it's, 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 <laughs> it's being it's being Off tough. I mean, but there is no more middle class. There's a half and, and have not. Okay, okay. So that's a, for a lot of reasons, right? The, 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 the big changing, the big though. the big mantra the big mantra is jobs, right? Where are the jobs? Where are the jobs? Where well, the wait jobs? a minute. Is the big mantra jobs or is the big mantra self empowerment? Yeah, self that's what I I, well, I I think that I think regardless involved. of who will be in office, no. it's all about you. And what you are going to do to make it happen for the most part. People can say this, that they won't do this for us or they won't. It's all about you and and how bad you want it. I mean, it's it's simple. I mean, of course, yes, (coughs) we need to make sure that we got the person that's in office that's going to look out for us if we do get in business uh, with our tax dollars and so forth. But what are you going to do in the meantime? You know, because a lot of people will sit and just talk about what they're not doing and what people are not doing for them. What are you doing for yourself? Instinctively, I want to buck against that, but you're right, Tashanta. I have to agree because in all the time I've lived in America and started as a serial entrepreneur, different businesses, different endeavors, I didn't really care what was going on in the political arena. It, to me, it didn't matter. It was about I'm going to do this and get it going. Right. You know, sink or swim. Right, right. And so – it's, once you get to a certain level, that exactly. that that one to two to three percent, whatever, and you wanna you wanna just, uh, I think what they're talking about is you know America well, you mean America, America a certain level there. You get, you get to that certain level where all of a sudden you're too you have too much money. I was just yeah you're yeah, a, you're you a whole too much another money ta- tax bracket. And now. now okay whoa so now you make more than mm-hmm. three hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay so now, now you make more than a small country. Mm-hmm. Right. So <laughs> well not even that much. You not, now that you 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 worked hard either you went either you went to school you had a great job now with a big company or you started your own company whatever it is now that you're making more than Two, three, four stacks, three, three hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, now the game changes a little mm-hmm. bit, mm-hmm. right? I, now, I, now, I, hang on, I, I hang get, on, hang on. This is this, this is I, where I get a little money is, in my pocket. I'm gonna, ch- I'm gonna change my view. No, no, no. no. I'm talking about, I'm talking about your, your on paper tax. Right. Right. I got you, you get taxed differently, mm-hmm. and so this, so now it's like this. This is the fundamental thing. It's like now that you have worked hard and you've done all this, now the government, the tax code, I should say, not the government, the tax code changes for you. Now, so you're paying X amount. Now you're paying. X amount plus more, mm-hmm. which makes it harder for you to do what you've already been doing. And so this is where this is what I'm talking about when it, when it comes to it's it's the it's yeah, the it's, I'm it's, the, to be it's, a it's the, right. <laughs> but you're gonna pay a lot of taxes yeah, exactly. as as you go forward. And instinctively, as a person, wait, a you want you want to hang on, you want to keep the Didn't amount of money that you, you make. What I think I heard you say. What you're gonna pay more taxes, uh, to Shanta when you become a billionaire. Is that true? I didn't say that. I said oh, as as okay, as you okay. as you as you earn more, you You're will be taxed more, more. <laughs> until you get to a certain portion where they tax you less. Hmm. And that's where we're talking about is when those billionaires aren't paying the same tax rate that you and I would pay. Mm-hmm. And that's what they're talking about. As a you know, as, I'm, you know, as a single person in Southern California, I'm paying thirty five percent off the top in taxes. I don't think I don't think a billionaire would pay that much because they're what they're quote unquote job creators, and that's where the actual debate comes into that play. Well, we have one in the room. I like to get his take on this. <laughs> that's right. The billionaire PA. <laughs> <has, laughs> billionaire. Uh, from wealthy minds speaking oh, dreams you know, into existence. You know, everybody that know me know that's just a dream. I speak into existence. Of course it is. You know it's what I'm saying? When I when just. I when I go yeah. to the bank, I don't deposit money. I just deposit faith. <laughs> <laughs> But you it's know? gonna happen. Yeah, it's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? Just believe in yourself. All right. But no, but, I, I agree, but, man. But my question is, uh, do you agree? Is that your belief that, uh, first of all, you know, the wealthy don't pay taxes in this country the way the middle class and working class do? Uh, one of the things I gleaned from this documentary and from my own research, and I know this. I wish I would have saw that documentary. I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> it got me so charged up about <laughs> economics and politics in this country. And Michael Moore is good. He's had several several documentaries mm-hmm. over the last decade that have been very, very good. You know, The Bully for Columbine and Fahrenheit 9-11. So he, he's a very respected filmmaker. But, again, I want people to understand, like, you need to under- be an informed voter. 
So if you're if you're making a certain amount of money and your tax rate changes as you as you proceed, you know, do you support that up the ladder? Mm-hmm. Do, 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 you, do you support that? You know, and, and then as the more you make, the more you the more you tax. And then, you know, people are always complaining about, you know, I'm trying to start a company, but I got to pay payroll tax and, and merchandising tax and and all the other kind of taxes to help that 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 impede me from hiring more people. Now, personally, I don't think that just business should be, you know, the end all be all for electing the president. The president has other things to manage on top of the economy and, 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 and business. So it shouldn't be your, your your full criteria. But if you are looking to go into business for yourself or if you're already in business for yourself and your business is growing and your income is increasing, you need to be informed about what both candidates are talking about. And that's and that's what my passion is, is to make sure that you are informed and that you know what the deal is as your income increases. That the game will change for you once you earn two hundred fifty thousand dollars, half a million, three quarters of a million, a millionaire, one point five, one point two, five million, billion, whatever. You're gonna your people are gonna be more more people will be looking at you. Mm-hmm. And people will find different ways to kind of move their money around. I will give you a case in point. Simple case in point. When I was when I was in banking, we used to get commissions. In your right? case, would you move your billions around? Let's yeah, let's talk about that. Wouldn't would you? <laughs> no, I'm saying in if your I, case, <laughs> when you move when you move your billions around. <laughs> now here's a simple example. Simple okay. example. It, it was another banker that I was working with, and we would always talk about, you know, our our commissions, right? So we work hard, we earn this commission, right? See his so, billions. That's what I said. Mm-hmm. Got <laughs> we got billions. Our commission. A billionaire. No, nah, man. <laughs> but what would happen is and anybody would tell you this: if you if you get a commission, your tax rate increases, mm-hmm. does it not? So if I earn five thousand dollars for a commission, I'm being taxed twenty five hundred. I'm being taxed half half, well, half of what I've worked to hard yeah. to get. <laughs> Versus if I if I may have not have worked hard enough, I made maybe three thousand. I may take home two thousand. I think I have the tax ignorant. Hmm? Those are the tax ignorant, though. Those that are that is who- the American tax code, Rich, and, that, and that's what I, that's what I'm trying to get to. You. It's like the people people don't want to work harder to pay more in taxes, and that's mm-hmm. what, and that's what the that's the fundamental baseline of this argument is is tax code. It's all about tax code. It's all about tax code. Mitt Romney, whoever, they're going to be talking about tax code. They're going to mm-hmm. have all this talk about whatever, but when it comes down to business, the only way government has influence over business. Is through his tax code. That's it. That's it. It can, it can, it can either give you an incentive to, to grow by decreasing your tax rate, or they can say equal tax rate on everybody. Everybody paid the same shot. And if a person is working harder, like you work harder, you work harder than the average for the average 40, 40 hour a week payroll person. They're gonna tax you more. How do you feel about that? How do you I'm feel mad about that? And I can't <laughs> take it anymore. <laughs> but that, but she, but that's what I'm saying. If you work harder, you'll make more money. And you'll get taxed more than somebody who's not working as hard as you are. And that's what that's the, and, that's and, and, and that and that's pay. the mentality yeah. that Republicans are trying to put out there to the American public. Is that why are you working so hard for the government to take so much? And at the same time, we have more people that are government dependent than we than we were, than we were, we were in 2009. And that's what their arguments come into play. That's where people are like, yeah. ah, that's a point on that. Yeah. That's you know, that's so, so, it's so touchy. Yeah. It's so touchy because I've been on both ends. I've been exactly. Bro- I've been broke and yeah. dependent mm-hmm. on the government. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's what y'all. Right. You know. So, so I totally understand, so man. So your you know? status changed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Your exactly. status true. changed. As, so it's not racial. It's, yeah. it's it's economic. It's like okay, now that I make money. I, I do. Look, I remember. I remember Nas and Jay Z had an album that called, had a song they called "Black Republicans." They were calling all well, the Republican now. All of a sudden, these these cats are running around the hood talking X, Y, and Z. They get some money in the pocket. Things change a little bit. They ain't saying nothing. They've not, been not, quiet, and that, and that was something that was brought that right, I, no, I had no, read about. They right. they've been very quiet. Right now, now Jay now Jay Z they they campaign for a Barack, no yeah. doubt. I'll doubt. Well, you got a song called "Black Republicans." <laughs> you know, so it's it's I'm, when you when you when you when, you, when, you, when, you, when your environment changes, when you make more money, just like just like you can't hang with the same people anymore, right? Like your friends changed a little bit. You don't want them to change, but it just you yeah. think differently now. You're taxed differently now. You, you talk about things that you weren't talking about before. Exactly, and and, and like I said, it's all, all in the individual, right? Exactly. In, for what's good for them, right then, right now. 
What's good for me right now? Am right. I rich or am I poor? Right. If you take off rich right now, if you get that next sponsor, and your income doubles for the next two or three years, and you keep a Democrat in office. I'm done with you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you are going to be <laughs> you're going to you're going to be paying more. Vanessa be in here running the board. <laughs> You'll be the host and the moderator. I like it. <laughs> you're a job creator. You'll be laid by the job creator. <laughs> According according to the according to the Republican mantra, so I mean it's just if you're a business owner, you want to make more money, you need to be cognizant of of how much more you're going to be bringing home. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I think that's a good point at which to take a break. <laughs> that's a great song to go the out the next break. segment of the show. You're listening to the new Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. I am your humble host and moderator, Richard Carr, joined by. The first lady of the radio boardroom, Miss Toshanta Hogan, CEO, founder of SensationalSoaps.com. Chamberlain Duru, vice president of membership services for LAX Coastal Area Chamber of Commerce. And the CEO and founder of Wealthy Minds, Mr. Billionaire PA, cracking his knuckles on the mic. We'll be right back (laughs) after the break. Don't go away. Yeah. You're intelligently tuned to the radio boardroom. We'll be right back. Don't go away. No ceiling, still in the quarter million, feeling ice grilling. Hit the avenue, earthquake up the mall. Give Jacob a call, then make a withdrawal. Face on the forms in 94, I did it. Come on, man. Wreck it, I'm a bad boy. Well, let's get it. Come on. You know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and hosts of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hey everybody, this is Richard Carr inviting you to join me in the radio boardroom for the new Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit in my all new day and time. That's right, the new Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit is moving to Mondays at 5 p.m. Pacific. So don't forget, the new Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit, now Mondays at 5 p.m. Pacific, exclusively here on LA Talk Live, where it's more than just talk. We'll see you there. Hi, L.A. Are you getting out to vote on Tuesday, November 6th? I know I am. Hi, this is Julie Orlov of Pathways to Love, and I'm joining L.A. Talk Live in encouraging the citizens of Los Angeles to get out and vote on Election Day. As you know, this is one of the most important elections in our American history, and we need everyone in L.A. to register and have a voice on November 6th. Currently, the state of California has 6.5 million people eligible but not yet registered to vote, and about half of those voters live in L.A. County. So I'm joining the family here at L.A. Talk Live in encouraging you to register and vote on Tuesday, November 6th. And if you haven't yet registered, don't worry, you have until midnight, October 22nd, and you can now even register online. That's right, if you have a signature file online with the DMV or a state ID number, you can now register to vote at registertovote.ca.gov. And don't forget to join us here on Tuesday, November 6th for LA Get Out and Vote, our live election day coverage from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., where we are going to keep you tuned in exclusively to LA election news and poll coverage all day right here on LA Talk Live, where we are more than just talk. The Ferrari or Jaguar switching four lanes on the top down, screaming out money ain't a thing. Bubble hard in the double law, flash the rings with the window crack, holla back, money ain't a thing. Hey yo, Barry. So look here, man. I got a little drama here in the bo- radio boardroom, man. You know, I got some cats ain't supporting you, homie. So uh, look, I'm gonna meet you on the court tonight. We're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna line these fools up, man. Uh, all right, I'll talk to you in a little bit. Yeah. All right. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I just got off the phone with Barry himself, uh, Mr. Barack Obama. <laughs> so I got beat up. 
<laughs> I got beat up at the break for being so pro Barack. <laughs> had to hate him up. He's on the courts right now, shooting jumpers on fools. <laughs> and I just had to let him know I need some support here in Radio York. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the New Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. Uh, joined by Wealthy Minds, CEO and founder, Billionaire PA, Vice President of Membership Services, LAX Coastal Area Chamber of Commerce, and of course, CEO, founder of Sensational Soaps, and the first lady of the radio boardroom, Miss Toshanta Hogan. So welcome back to the show, man. So, you know, someone suggested that it might be generational, that I am so Barry friendly. <laughs> but I don't think that that's the case, but maybe it is. And I'm open-minded enough to um, be open to any suggestions or advice. Now, the fact of the matter is, you know, this brother has done a lot of good stuff. He has done a lot of good stuff. Mm-hmm. Incredibly intelligent, genius He's individual. Done a lot of great things. And, and has uh, only been in office for four years. Yeah, and, uh, and, and the fact of the matter is, first two years, you get settled in. Last two years, you campaign. Final four years of his reelection, God willing, and he gets reelected, is really all about the real change that he initiated mm-hmm. in his first two years mm-hmm. as president. Mm-hmm. I agree with presidents. you. I agree with 110 percent with you. I think you know. It, but it, is it, it generational that I am so in love with the first pre- black president of America? Uh, I think it plays a role. I, th- I think your I think your social economic background will, always plays a role because your experiences in this country go further back than, than mine do. Mm-hmm. I can I can only speak as an especially on the social economic tip. <laughs> <laughs> like you know I've been a, I've been like a an adult adult for maybe. Ten years. <laughs> you, got, you got new money. You got old money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I can't really. I can't talk. That's real talk. I can't. I can't talk too much yeah. about it. You know. I got dollar bills in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> we in the same boat. Right? <laughs> I've been right. an adult for three years. <laughs> well, I ain't well, gonna say nothing. You know? I'm closed out. <laughs> so I mean, it definitely plays a role because you can go. Your your views on the country go, go back further than mine, and you know the different times, the different times, yeah. and, and, we, different and wh- times. where you work yeah. and what you do, and what you're exposed to, and the groups of people that you're exposed to, and and the conversation that you have with folks will help shape your your uh, your influence. And mm-hmm. I'm I'm of the I'm somebody who is constantly hearing everything from every side all the time, uh, so. That can only make and me. And you're hearing it from business owners for the most business part. Business owners, yeah. and we also have people that work in government. Yeah. But from what some of what you hear, and and this is what I'd like to challenge, uh, some of what you hear from business owners, both from both sides of the discussion, is some of that influenced by the the, the false notion that Barack being the first black president of America, was supposed to address the needs of black Americans first, which, of course, is a false, you know, notion. I almost want to say idiotic, but I don't want to call out nobody mm-hmm. out there in our listenership. It's, it'd be foolish to think that he's a black president and all about black people. And, you know, the old, you know, Parliament Funkadelic put out a song called Paint the White House Black. Mm-hmm. And... You know, there might be some people who are upset that Barack didn't break out the black cans of paint and paint it all mm-hmm. black. I'm joking, of course. But it's, it's part of what you're saying and, and part of what you're hearing from the streets, from business owners. One, that they thought that Barack was going to be a black president. And, and I, I'm not I'm, I'm just saying of your black constituency mm-hmm. and because, you know, there are four black people in the room tonight, mm-hmm. I think. Mm hmm. Billionaire could be Latino. I don't know. Um, <laughs> right? You black? Yeah. Black, right? 100%. 100%. All right. Now, so four black people sitting at the dais tonight, um, is part of what you're hearing speaking from your, um, or, or what you're hearing from the black constituency, that they they were thinking that Barack was going to be the black president to save their lives and change everything. I don't and, think I've heard. And, okay, okay, because, cool. Because business owners. Cool. You, and, 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 and the second part of that question is, and I'll shut up okay. and let you answer both parts, is the second the second part of the question, are, are some of those people disappointed in his performance prematurely? Because I mentioned that he's only been in office for four years. Mm-hmm. And the ability to fix what, what started in 1980 
and culminated in 2009, is it unrealistic to think that that president could fix that in four simple years? Oh, absolutely. Or even eight simple years. Great question. Yep. In fact, it had to be four five black presidents. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, the first part of your question, you're asking, you know, the expectations of a black president to 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 the black business sector. I, I haven't. I have. I personally haven't had any conversation with any business owner who has been disappointed with. Stand the, that mic a little closer. Sorry. Uh, he was, any black business owner who is dis- disappointed with the president in, re- in regards to him not having enough of an impact on the black community. Black business owners, any business owner for the most part, are very self-reliant people. They're go-getters. That's a good point, Chamber. You know, there there are people who are like, you know, I'm going to do it my way. This is gonna, I'm going to make this happen. Come hell or high water. I work five to nine, Monday through Sunday. You mean older black? Business owners? Business owners on the whole. Oh, in a general. Yeah. Okay. Generally speaking, I mean, that's, that's the one common. So my position might not be generational. <laughs> I have to just get that in. <laughs> well, most business owners that have been around are over a certain, over a certain age. Um, but they, they all have that same common thread. It's that, you know, they work. They don't believe in work hours. They believe in just getting the work done. done. And so, it's, so it's, it's, it doesn't even, like, going back to what Chanta was talking about, it doesn't matter who's in office. I'm going to get this thing done regardless. Um. If anything, it's more so on the local level when it comes to you know the ability to get things done. It's mm-hmm. always it's can, can be a challenge along with um, programs and yeah and programs stuff of that like nature, that, yeah. but never on a on a federal level. Where no, the president hasn't done enough for the black community in terms of small business owners. I never I never heard that. Uh, well, you've heard, heard it. I, you, I, the word never, you know, you, you, you don't want to say that. Right. And my, and my, my you re- do hear it, my uh, res- even my, if you're watching TV. Yeah, my response yeah. to that, though, is to manage your expectations. Okay. You know, and, and, and be the, responsible for your own Yeah, be responsible for expectations. Here, the, you know, the president is the president of the United States of America. You know, and, and you know, does he have a responsibility to the people who help him get in the office? Absolutely. Um, but you must first ask yourself have i done everything in my power to make sure that i am successful um and have i done everything have i met the people have i made the connections have i done everything resources with, with, right yeah. to make sure that i am i am successful or i'm on the right track to blame a president or any other any other person for that matter uh for your own for your own misfortunes or unachievements is is not being it's not being responsible. Before we swing the mic to the billionaire PA, the only billionaire in the room tonight, by the way, so what do you guys know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of this documentary, twice in the documentary, in fact, and as a um, prologue to the documentary, they uncovered a videotape of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Uh, that's all that. Right. Um, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's it's his old. I mean, this it's, that kind of goes back that to guarantees as, as as another amendment to the Constitution, the guarantee, right, of it, an equal playing field as a whole is what it synopsized. I think is what my takeaway was it from it was an equal playing field, so that everybody could Had own a business mm-hmm. or at least have the opportunity to do that. Right. It's, it's the pursuit of happiness. You know, it's the pursuit of happiness. Does everybody have Not the, the right? Not the guarantee, but at least the pursuit thereof. Mm-hmm. Does everybody have the opportunity? And stability. And that was the, that was the one thing that was been, that was that was the whole Occupy, the Occupy Wall Street thing was all about. It's you're, t- you're taking away the opportunity for people to be successful by, via the bad home loans, via the, the education. Credit, credit with crunch, the banks. Yeah. the education, cost of education. Sure. All this stuff is talking about you are taking away my opportunity or taking away my access or taking away my chance to be w- where you are. Mm-hmm. Everybody that is successful is successful due to either somebody that had to help them, some kind of program, some kind of the school, had a some kind of scholarship or something that happened that helped them along the way. And if you start taking away those things that help people along the way, that's where you start having a, an economy that's, or society for that matter, that's, that's of, of, of unrest. Suffering. You know, you, you, yeah. and you, you compound that with the fact that the economy's jacked up and you're going to be at Hemorrhaging. odds. Yeah. At odds. <laughs> I want to take some time out now to swing back to uh, the billionaire PA. And as a young brother, um, Growing up, at least long enough to see the changes between, I think long enough to see the changes 
let's say between Bill Clinton and the Bushes and where we are today with a black president, how do you weigh in on this? I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. I think, you know what I'm saying, young people, just in general, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I will say this. This is what I'll say. Barack Obama is the first president in the entire universe, the world, that has ever made me feel like my voice was worth voting. Mm-hmm. I hear that, brother. And I'm sure there's a millions of more youth that feel that way. Barack Obama is the reason I started Wealthy Minds. I really didn't see no hope in starting a company. You know, I just didn't have faith in myself. And, you know, that's why I choose to put out the messages that I put out. You know, it's a personal subject to me because a lot of people look for instant gratification. Mm-hmm. In order to be successful, you got to be loyal. And if you voted for Obama, you got you just got to be loyal. Some people that run businesses for 10 years and they can't even succeed in one business. But you expect a man to change the whole country in four years. Good point. That's the only point I was trying to make mm-hmm. earlier. And throughout some of my discourse, just in challenging the dialogue here to make it interesting, it really is about really what did you what what does anybody really expect of one black man? Yeah, in and, and that's true. What he 400 said. Four hundred years of oppression. Let's keep it real. It does take time to grow. Sure. In, in, in any business, they say that uh, statistically that business you'll be out of business within two years for the most part. And, and people do want. Wow, uh, that's incredible. Because uh, it was five instant, years. Instant, instant gratification, yeah. you know, instant gratification. So it takes time. Anything that's worth anything, it's going to take time. And you know, the one, and I say, I want to say this too. You know, one thing that I that I do like about Barack is he is the fact that he does touch on, you know, hope, you know, just encouraging people to have hope, hope. and faith. And seeing beyond the materialistic things that are in front of you, you know, but you like most like I say, most people have eyes that mean they can see, but not everybody has vision. You know, you have to be able to just have faith in the person that you are voting for, that they're going to help you and your family speak your dreams into existence. And I think that, you know, one thing for sh- well, I don't even think I know for sure all of the kids that I mentor, which is thousands of them, thousands of them. The reason why they are voting is because of Barack Obama. Now, I want to continue in our dialogue with you, billionaire. You came to us several months ago for another show, and I was so impressed by you. And another brother, man, it'll come back to me, his name, another youth motivational speaker. Jim Hernandez. Jim Hernandez, Jim. thank you. Mm-hmm. Diamond Jim, I like to call him, um, who... You know, again, I'm just blown away by the fact that as young people, you've taken up the responsibility, and this is something I talk about all the time, self-empowerment. How does one claim one's own power in the world? You know, whatever the powers that be and whatever and however they move against you, as a man and as a woman... As an entity, as an individual, as a divinely created entity, how do you stand up against them and compete against them? All that stuff comes into play. When you look at the world today, what young people are faced with, how do we claim our own power as black people? Um, And I think, you know, Chamberlain has done a good job of pointing out the fact that I'm older than y'all <laughs> and that I come up from a different era and watch different heroes stand up against the most formidable of odds um, and, you know, get us where we are today, where we, in fact, can talk about a real black candidate, let alone a black president. I remember... In the 80s, uh, there I go, being old. Again. <laughs> See, you bring it on yourself. I can't. Come. We got to do it. We can't, we can't, we can't relate we to that. You. I got you. In the 80s, when Jesse Jackson ran for president, I remember before any of y'all had licenses driving my car down the block with the posters on the side of the car and uh-huh. eh, 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 vote for Jesse Jackson, right? Maybe we kind of take for granted that a black man can be president. I'm sure. You, present company excluded nonetheless but from a youth perspective and the thing that i admire most about you and jim hernandez is the message you're taking to young people of hope um 
a message that emanates from the 60s, from the 50s, from the civil rights era, through Martin Luther King, channeled through Jesse Jackson, on up to you nowadays. Yeah. You feel me? And it's not just, yeah, it's not just him. It's mm-hmm. Jim, too. Mm-hmm. So many young people. Talk to us about, and this is why I got on this little bit of tangent, forgive me, Wealthy Minds and the Billionaire PA. You've been here before. You've been on other shows for all of our first-time listeners and for the first time, or maybe the second time here on the New Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. What's the message you're giving out to these young people? What are you getting out to them? And how are they receiving it? Well, first off, when I first, when I created Wealthy Minds, we never, I never created it to you know, set out just to truly make a billion dollars and make money. Yeah. What I wanted to do was... You're wealthy spiritually, brother. What I wanted to do was inspire our youth to understand the value of their minds and stop putting their dreams in other people's hands. Mm-hmm. I never put my dreams in another man's hand because the only... Round of applause. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. There you go. But I was going to I was going to say I I never put my dreams in another man or woman's hands because they don't care about it like I do. And so a lot of people stand up, but a lot of people don't stand for something. And when I when I created Wealthy Minds, I stood for teaching kids, teaching adults how to speak their dreams into existence regardless of your race, your color. And you say adults. Young adults? Uh like like my mom, like people that don't but like your like some people have some people have kids and their parents don't believe in their dream. And that was the case with me. And when your parents don't believe in your dream, that kind of script your value. And I didn't see no value in myself in life mm-hmm. until I moved to a city called Los Angeles where people where the things that people talk bad about me in the South. I saw that it had value here. And where are you from originally? Uh, originally, I'm from heaven. OK, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But I dropped down in Alexander City, Alabama. Okay. <laughs> where did you land? <laughs> Was my next question. <laughs> no doubt. How are young people receiving this message? Because there is a video of you, um, very popular on YouTube. All I don't even think it's young people. I think, like you said, adults too, but, older mm-hmm. people. Everybody needs hope right now. But see, I'm trying to yeah. assign him to this particular project there, young, <laughs> my sister. <laughs> I'm trying to keep him on these young people because they're the future. Yeah. No question. I, I went but young and old, yeah. I went after young people because when you go after young people, it grabs the attention of young people and the parents. The imagination mm-hmm. there. Versus right. if I go after the parents, the parents don't necessarily show all the mail all the mail that comes in your mailbox. You don't show that to your kids. Mm-hmm. But if the kids get it, they'll bring it to you because they don't want to pay the bill. <laughs> <laughs> but you get the point. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, targeted, uh, I targeted youth because I, I, I felt like that no parent should not believe in their child. And, my, and because of the environment that I was in, nobody believed in me. And to look at me to be doing what I'm doing right now, to be doing music look and clothing. Look at you now. Getting you know, paper. And, you know. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised just to be, you know, where I'm at right now. But, you know, it's all thanks to God and believing in myself and just executing that dream. And that's why I continue to every single day I wake up and I give you for people the opportunity, you know, just to wake up and execute their dream. And there's nothing better than that than to inspire kids. How How is your relationship with your mother now? Oh, uh, my now mom. That, she, now that she see that you're doing what you. Oh, you know, one of the best things that I feel like in in the world is when you can grow up and have one like a a, a terrible relationship and then you're able to come back and be and you, my mom it. is my best friend. Yes. So I right. wanted to and she works with me on wealthy minds and we Great. talk every day. But just to know that, you know, <laughs> to know when you was raised and you had all these issues like there is like I'm a living testament Wrong of applause, a person that 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 strictly yeah. believes in faith. And I grew up my whole life and I didn't have faith. I didn't have faith in God because. I wanted instant gratification. Mm -hmm. And when people would say, you know, get on your knees and pray, I felt like that came later. My Mm -hmm. situation was bad then. And I kind of feel like that's what's going on with, um, you know, the presidential thing is like people are looking for instant gratification, Mm -hmm. but they have no Mm -hmm. hope and they have Mm -hmm. no faith. Mm -hmm. But I understand both sides because that used to be me. But that's why I went through my trials and tribulations so I can no longer judge people and I can relate to them. And when I speak, I'm able to speak to the masses and not just my you know, group of African-Americans, but I can speak to Caucasians and I can speak to Latinos. I um I had a wonderful weekend um and it, it was one of those weekends where I was like God what are you really trying to tell me because it was so much that I saw over the weekend um I went to my homecoming game on Friday for Dorsey um did that, they win yes we did we killed right. like fifty four zero the last applause was for you I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Um, and then we had our pink party, and then from there I went to uh, my give back party. How was the pink party? It was good. Yeah, very Updated. good. It was uh, the bl- uh, several uh, boutiques in the area, and people were coming down to see this shuttle. So it, it was really good for us because oh we had a God. lot of people they who did right not, yeah. yeah, who did not, you know. Uh, know that we existed there so they stopped in and saw it and so forth wow then i went from there i went to uh jazz to the heart with my give back partner a daughter's heart and um it was it's about they give love pouches to people that are dying with cancer and so forth so it was that was very great then i went to the aids walk the following day did the aids walk you were busy Mm -hmm. met a lot (laughs) of different people there and then i went to another fundraiser uh for april michelle brown and that was, you know, and, and, and so the first one, A Daughter's Heart, was a young lady who talked to us about um, uh, how, she, how she was got married four days before she, her one year anniversary. Her husband died to cancer. She found out she had cancer. Now her mother, she just found out that she has cancer as well. And just this past August, then the April Michelle Brown uh, story is in Essence magazine, four page spread about how she had got a, a, a butt injection and it just infected her so she has no limbs no arms no legs so meaning I, that she became a powerful yeah exactly so wow. I, the thing was like he said people are, are looking for hope some kind of way um they're trying to change the past you know the, the past meaning when i say the past their their parents we have the, you have your parent who's dying to cancer you want to make the best uh, uh, possible vote that you can for your mother, your father, whoever is in with illness. So we look to people like like uh, the billionaire Brain PAA FBI. for inspiration, for encouragement, for to tell us that we can and we can do this, or we can step out literally on faith and start our own business and so forth. But just looking at that entire weekend, it was just like wow, you know, it's my 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 situation. It I have nothing to complain to complain about because there is theirs is so much more than I can even bear. So we're everyone is looking up and looking for people as the billionaire PA Jim Hernandez and many other people that follow suit. We everyone needs that inspiration right now thank you yeah indeed indeed um again billionaire pa wealthy minds talk about the company itself before we go to break t-shirts i'm really missing my armband you know i'm gonna tell you son if you give me 10 of them well i'm I'm gonna give away 11 of them that's why i don't have it on tonight because i pass on that positivity that you bring to me oh absolutely so please bring me some armbands because they're really really cool too I mean, well, you know, Let's talk man. about the company, Wealthy Minds. Guides on his team. Who is on yours? Hmm. Guides on my team. Who's on yours? T-shirt he's wearing. Wealthy Minds. Go ahead. Well, right now we're just looking to, you know, like I spoke with Chamberlain earlier, we're just looking to expand this brand and turn it into a more of a a, a universal brand. And we're gonna basically we're gonna infect the entire world with motivation, success, and we're gonna encourage people to develop wealthy minds. And as many people know, I just released my first single, and I go up under the stage name Wealthy Minds for branding purposes of the company. And Too Much Faith came out six days ago and got over a quarter of a million views in six days. So, you know, I'm blessed that that happened. We're gonna keep on encouraging people to have faith, man. And I'm gonna keep, you know, we doing more than just t-shirts now. We sell every product that you could possibly think of except for shoes, which I'm working on that right now because I want everybody to walk in the direction of success and wealth. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Every step you take is one step closer to wealth. That's what I'm doing with wealth. I know that's right. They got to light up though. We have to have like lights. I'm 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 gonna even make her a purse when she opens it. Just say, my mind is wealthy. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we got to make things for everybody, man. just having fun with the brand you know i don't even look at wealthy yeah. minds as work man i wake yeah. up every day yeah. and i inspire people man like my my designs are all in you know what i'm saying all 50 states and other countries you know i'm gonna say this right here is one my grandmother once told me that the most powerful thing that you have is your mind my products have went places that i've never physically been but because i had a dream it would now take me there because i took that idea and i made it tangible most people can't take their ideas from their mind and make it touchable make it where you can see it and that's what i want people to do just execute your dream regardless of what no anybody says and that's why my only rule in this world is people don't really care about your problems your situation they just care about execution Mm -hmm. when i was in my truck for 
for 63 days, nobody cared. When I, when my mama was told she would never walk, nobody cared. When my daddy was in his coma, nobody cared. When I attempted suicide, nobody cared. So I wrote quotes to motivate me. And now when I speak, you know, you can feel that energy come out because I can feel that I totally changed from the, the, the cool little kid that want to play to this is what I really love to do. And you know what I'm saying? I would probably, you know hurt somebody in a positive way by my speaking mm-hmm. <laughs> I hear that's that. my passion and what yeah. are we hearing in the background here you can never have too much faith no matter what you go through in life man i wanted to give two young artists man an opportunity that deserve it hanani taylor and elijah lou and you know i did the motivational speaking on it and i wrote the song with uh what my writing partner her name is tiffany catching and we just wanted to come together and basically diversify our brand with music now and movies and not just clothing but in order to infect over one billion people you got to step out there have faith and do everything that god blesses you to do and that's what i'm gonna do and that's my first single you can never have too much faith even if your lights off right now sitting there and light candles man your future's still bright yes wealthy wealthy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> love this young brother man yeah. sir all right let's listen to this as we go to the break you're listening to too much faith this is wealthy minds and when we come back from the break in the wrap out, we're going to talk about what wealthy minds and wealth, spiritual, personal, individual wealth is all about, and monetary wealth. Maybe we'll talk about that because we got Chamberlain Duru here, <laughs> vice president. <laughs> Shout out to Chamberlain Duru <laughs> for helping me speak Cultural my dreams. area <laughs> chamber of commerce, and of course, the first lady of the radio board and myself, so Shanta Hoke and some sensational soap. We'll be right back after this. Don't go away. Encouraging you all to speak your dreams into existence. You don't have to be sleep to have a dream. With our faith, we can dream with our eyes open. Because we can never have too much faith. We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Sisters is an organization that embodies women from all walks of life. Our membership includes 44 women that are constantly growing in the areas of personal development and community involvement. Monthly, we offer free leadership classes at McCade's Restaurant. Journey aims to inform women in the areas of heart disease and HIV and AIDS. Experience the journey now by logging into www.journeymosaicinc.com. Dot com. Toll free 888-906-5519. Journey with no excuses. What's up? I thought you was ready. We can't be late. I can't go out looking like this. My hair is a hot mess. Don't trip, baby girl. I got something for you. It's called Mixed Chicks. Mixed Chicks? But I'm not mixed. You don't have to be mixed. 
Oh, it says right here in the bottle, whether you're black, white, Asian, Latino, Mediterranean, or any glorious combination. And it works for both men and women, too. Is it alcohol-free? Yes, yeah, so it won't dry your hair out. Sounds like Mixed Chicks is the answer to all my hair problems. Mixed Chicks. Control your curls. Check out MixedChicks.net. Mixed Chicks, available at select salons, beauty supplies, and your neighborhood Target stores. Hey, this is Richie Carr, General Manager for LA Talk Live and host of the New Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. I wanted to take a moment out to welcome one of my newest sponsors, and that is Sensational Soaps. Sensational Soaps are handmade with all natural ingredients, with absolutely no preservatives, no harsh chemicals, and of course, no animal testing. Your body will look and feel silky, smooth, moisturized, and completely revived. Do you suffer from dry, ashy skin? Then layer your skin with their luxurious blend of oils and shea butters specially formulated to revive dry, dull skin. Sensational Soaps also offers a full line of bath and body products, including luxurious bath salts and body scrubs, massage oils and lip balms, even romantic gift sets and custom gift baskets for your lover or significant other. For more information or to place an order, visit them at www.sensationalsoaps.biz. That's www.sensationalsoaps.biz. Sensational Soaps. Pamper yourself and indulge your senses. Sensationalsoaps.biz. Proud sponsors of LA Talk Live and the new Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the new Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit, heard Monday nights, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 Eastern, exclusively here on the world's leader in internet radio broadcasting. This is the Talk Live Broadcast Network, broadcasting to you tonight from our New York TalkLive.com affiliate, www.NewYorkTalkLive.com. That's right, we in your area, so be sure to tune in. This is the new Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit, a.k.a. the Radio Boardroom, joined by Tashanta Chamberlain and the billionaire P.A. himself. Yeah, ma. So before the break, we were asking Billionaire to talk a little bit about his company and um, wanted to pose the question in the wrap-out for this show tonight, what is wealth? Mentally, spiritually, physically, of course, and um, whatever else matters, I guess. <laughs> What's wealth to you? So, I want to start with the billionaire himself. He's the only billionaire in the room. Gotta Let's start. keep it real, gotta right? Start. Gotta start there, man. <laughs> y'all ain't billionaire. Speaking it into existence. Messing with y'all all this time. I should be sticking it with the young homie here. No, I'm only kidding. I have some very wealthy people on our dais tonight, as always. But we've got the billionaire PA, uh, returning champion. He's been here before. Um, you said earlier in the show that, you know, people know you're not a billionaire per se, but that billionaire PA is uh, an expression of your goals, your aspirations, um, how you project and see yourself both within yourself and amongst others. And that when you go to the bank, you ain't depositing billions it could be a couple of dollars, 20, 30, whatever. But it's all about, in my opinion, and what I get from you, the wealth I get from you. Be it a simple bracelet, a rubber band around my arm, you know, reminding me of having met you and talked to you, pressed your palm and been impressed by your message. Your wealth is definitely very deeply spiritual and also from your experience as a man. And how you got to be so wealthy. 
let's talk about what wealth means to you and how you impart that to the young people you encounter. Again, keeping in mind, and this is no challenge to you whatsoever, this beautiful picture and this video I see on this with this young brother. Yeah, that video online, is hot. I just look at all of these babies. Babies, around him. yes. See, that's what I see in this young brother here. Mm -hmm. How, his impact on these young people. Who's going to change my diaper when I'm 80? That's what I want to know. Because he's going to need one soon, huh? Uh, not quite that close. Uh, twice a child, once a man. You know, is yeah. what I mean by that. But the fact of the matter is, wealthy, what's it mean to you? And how do you impart this to young people? Well, when, when how do I'm, they buy into it? When I was coming up, people, t uh, people taught me that money was the most important thing. And then when I got a little older, I, I saw that it was resources and relationships because that, money will, anything, that right? will get you money. And so what I want the young people to realize is to understand the value of their relationships. And when you look at that video, that video, it wasn't money that got that video. It right. was the relationships of the people that I knew that when I was an intern, the, the director walked up to me. You know, I met him when I was an intern. That's a four or five year relationship. And I think we all wealthy in, a, in our own sense. Like I'm wealthy with just happy happiness and joyful for whatever it is that I got, because I don't believe in I don't really believe in trials and tribulations, because if something is negative and then the outcome was positive, mm -hmm. the situation wasn't really negative. Mm -hmm. You just turned it into a positive situation, and that's what I did with Wealthy Minds, and that's what I did with the Too Much Faith video, just to continue, man, just to inspire people to understand the value of what wealthy means to me. If you read within the word wealthy, it really says we all wealthy, if you spell that out. That's what that means to me, we all wealthy. W-E-A-L-T-H-Y, that says we all wealthy. That makes sense. I asked this. I'm going to ask it again because I'm not getting um, quite the clarity I had hoped. How are young people responding to this message? Oh, absolutely. My bad. That's all right. The thing that I love the most mine. about what I do, man, is when I go speak, uh, a, 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 one of my mentors came to me and said, the thing I love about what you're doing is... It's interactive with the kids and you let them stand up and speak their dreams into existence. I am one of the most different motivational speakers that you will ever see. I, I probably that. spend less time talking, more time listening, which is how you become successful. So what I do is it's not how many words you say. It's what you say with the words that come out that you, you know, you use in a short, you know, don't have to be that long. But what I do is I allow. Right. You know, sensational soaps to stand up, speak your dream into existence. Chamberlain, stand up, speak your dreams into existence. And when you speak, I relate my message to what you just spoke. So I don't go in and it's, it's not like I'm push, pushing my message on you. You know, I didn't read a scripture and then walk in and say, well, this is what I'm going to talk about, because those people might not believe in that scripture or what you're reading. And at the end of the day, my message is supposed to relate to the massive. So I'm supposed to listen to the massive. We got a caller. I want to bring this caller on now. Thanks, caller. We've had several. Thank you all for calling in and for being so patient. Welcome to the Radio Boardroom and the New Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. What is your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, Mark. My name is James, and I'm calling to give support. You guys are doing a great show, but I heard you guys talking about a film earlier. Uh, I would like to recommend America, Freedom to Fascism, America, Freedom to Fascism, you guys could uh, find it online as well as uh, any of your, uh, the rental places, but it's America Freedom to Fascism. It will definitely fit into what you guys are talking about. I'm an entrepreneur myself, I'm building a vehicle on alternative fuel, and I'm looking forward to being on your show. Unfortunately, I'm about to hit a tunnel. I'm about to lose reception, but keep it up, guys, and I'm listening in on my mobile. Thank you very Great. much, Thank Colin, you for your comment Thank you. and for your kind words. Uh, America from freedom to fascism or fascism, I should say. All right. Um, uh, you need uh, to look that up. Interesting. Are uh, we living actually, in a fascist state? Maybe yeah, that actually, a, if you if you ever go explore YouTube, uh, I've spent a lot of time on YouTube looking at clips of certain things. Uh, that, Tell us that, about that, Derek Chamberlain. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I've never seen it. I've never seen it. But there, okay. but there are a lot of, a lot of uh, documentaries or uh, things on YouTube that you can look at. It just gives you another perspective on certain things. I'm, I'm always seeking perspective. I love I love to debate, love for somebody to kind of tell me something that I don't know and tell me 
you know, and this and this bring different side uh, of, of an argument to light. You know, I'm a contrarian by nature. I, I love kind of being the odd guy or, or or going against the going against the grain uh, for certain things because because not so much because it creates an argument, but just because it creates thought. Exactly. You know, it creates mm-hmm. thought. And it's like okay, I didn't see it that way. You know, and you know that, that's that's the main reason why I kind of always kind of go against the argument and ask I ask questions uh, and I challenge people on their on their and their thoughts because I want to find out how, you know how deep can you go on this subject or how deep can you go on this are you just fighting the fight or are you just or do you have a reason behind what you're doing um and to, and to piggyback on uh what billionaire was talking about you know in terms of you know our young people and the reason why you know when I first met B and now now we're talking to help him get to that next level it's because you know I, no matter how not if you're Donald Trump or or just working out out, out of your garage or something I love that entrepreneurial spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I just think that you gain, and I've said this before on this show, you gain so much perspective on who you are as a person and how you handle adversity and how you handle uh, people and how you handle your finances. And whether you are successful and you make all the money in the world or or you crash and burn out in a year and a half, at least you tried, Try. man. At least, at least you went for it. You know, you have to be, you have to be about... You have to be about your what you want to do, and if you mess up, fine. You learn, and then you reapply. You stretch. Yeah. You know, you You're reapply, stretched. and that's that's the one You're thing bigger. that I, I've always admired from people who are are trying this thing, and I, and I wish that people would walk into it instead of being forced into it. Um, what I mean by that is maybe you got laid off, and now you have to make a buck for mm-hmm. yourself. But even even then, you even you, you, may, you, may, you make you may work harder because now that next check, you don't know where your next check's coming from. So you have to work with urgency, but just work towards something. Prepare yourself, whether you're going for your MBA or you're going for or you're taking night classes or you're going to score or it's SBDC, the Small Business Development Center, or you're seeking the Chamber of Commerce. Just seek information, seek thought, seek uh, people who are better than you in every way, fashion or form. We have more skilled than you, who are faster than you, who are smarter than you, who are more experienced than you. Be around those people, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, you'll grow so much personally. You know, and, and and going through this whole process, going through this whole journey. You know, being there has being there has, has done more for himself yeah. than a lot of people have done in their whole life. Yeah. You know, in terms of creating a following, if mm-hmm. you can create a following and anything you do, then people will always will always look to be with that. That's, that's human nature. We want to come together. You know, no matter what it is. And he said it before. You know, the most valuable asset you can have is human capital. Mm-hmm. You must have the ability. To, to have people believe in what you're talking about. Not a, not even that, um, too. Uh, what I noticed from Billionaire PA is, like, this isn't your show now, <laughs> <laughs> as he put, he put the kids before himself. He stands in the background. I'm looking at this video, like he said. I, I just looked at it. This phone is amazing. I just went to Google search the guy <laughs> who just said the America I saw it on. Oh, I, I need to re- read up on nice. that later. But anyway, <laughs> um, I, I looked at the video while we were on break and saw all the kids surrounding him um, and the little girl who's singing in the video. I said, do you know how much you have impacted her life? Not even her Forever. life. Yes. And he has 200 and 28,000 28, people who have viewed it. In a week. I mean, and, in, and, and in a week. the parents, I'm sure, are excited. Like, oh, my God, my daughter has an opportunity because he just opened a door up for her. This little girl where he did not have to. But he put her in the forefront. Like, here, you go ahead and take over. It's I'm going to be back here. Exactly. I'm going to be back here in the background, you know. And that's that's where wealthy comes from 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 him that's his wealthy his wealthy is literally really seeing that people grab it get it and be successful starting with the little baby all the way up to adulthood and that's something to be very admired about it's not so much about you it's about other people and that's why you are getting the payback from everybody else who is surrounding you and that's why everybody want to be near you they want mm-hmm. they want that they want to touch to they want that oh my god what yeah. he's what he's talking may about may i touch the hem yeah, of, your garment, of your garment exactly may I touch the hem pretty, of your garment? pretty much when you when you when you look at him you 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 see you see and feel look, god within him from the moment yeah. i met this young brother man i told him 
oh, you know, almost with tears in my eyes, dude, you on it, stay on it. Don't let nobody push you off your path. I said the same thing to Jim Hernandez yeah, as same. well. Yeah, Jim, Jim you same. young mm-hmm. brothers and for you young sisters out there who are motivational speakers, you need to be in touch with us so we can connect you to Jim and billionaire here so we can create this cabal, yeah. this, this this power center of young people getting this message out. Brilliant evaluation there or mm-hmm. observation uh, yeah. to Shanta about him putting that young lady out front. She gonna have a and CD making, next, yeah, and wealthy real. minds gonna be producing, <laughs> wealthy. and then he's gonna be the billionaire actually <laughs> going to the bank to wealthy. put real money in the bank, okay? <laughs> yeah, Deposit. Wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what I want to, uh, you know, jump in on what the two of them said. Like, uh, like in one of my speeches, going back to what Chamberlain said, is when I was doing negative stuff, I saw that the people that I was around played a heavy role on who I was as a person and that's why now I'm able to show people what their future look like if they just show me their mm. five best friends yeah I wow. need you to talk to my brother man. Wow. and until you can take yourself out of that situ- situation like millionaires hang with millionaires and when you, police officers hang with police officers broke people hang with broke people drug dealers hang with drug dealers and wealthy people hang with wealthy people That's the, that is the key to success you have to hang around what you want to be and Rich people can't teach you how to be broke. So check it. Rewind, young man. You said I can I can tell you what your future is going to be by looking at your. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you, yeah, I'll show you what again. your future looks like if you show me your five best friends. Wow. And what I mean by that is, even when you are, even if you met a wealthy person, they're not looking to see how you don't have to impress them with how much mm-hmm. money you have. Or you just have you to know, show perhaps, them even, yeah. how wealthy your, your mind, mind is. is. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. even when my pockets was broke, my mind made sense. Even when, you know, now I go out and I teach people to fall in love with success and cheat on failure. But mm-hmm. most people can never accomplish success because they in love with failure. They got it backwards. You know, I'm in love with success. I'm in love with the relationship of, you know, me and people like Chamberlain and you. It's like just from, you know, you guys alone, I've been blessed to meet a lot of people that have added value to my business. So it's not the money that I want. It's the relationship. And so when I come up here, let's say I come up here and some of my friends say, do they pay you to, you know, do the radio interviews it's like you don't everything that you do you don't get paid in the value yeah. of money right right you have, yeah. you have to find different ways of, to yeah. different currency because yeah. i was going to say sure we do we don't we don't picking up his paycheck but but my, my point my point exactly. for making that is a lot of these young people only want to see the dollar they want to see you walk in and walk out with yeah. something and that's where that's where um you know, I go in at and I educate them that the most valuable thing in the world is to know the right people. Oprah can walk in any store with no money and walk None. out and then steal nothing. Don't even walk the earth with money. You no. know? Can you imagine Oprah walking so, up somewhere and pulling out a wallet? <laughs> Get real. And and, yeah. and, and that's Jay-Z what and that's out, exactly. got a wallet. Yeah. He got a credit card. He got a he got what he got a a black what, what you know black card a black card or some Ophius card or some cryptic card. Really, Jay Z? No. <laughs> He walked yeah, the earth. You're right. He mm-hmm. walked the earth without that, mm-hmm. and why? Because that's self power. Power. Mm-hmm. And and that's, that's what I, I want to teach the kids that I work with. Do not take your money and go out on these streets and blow it. You take your money, you invest it in your company, and you work your you work your butt off so hard that you invite it to these shows. You don't want to pay to go to mm-hmm. no show. You want them to call you and be like. Whoever did that video needs to be at the Grammys. They need to be at the Oscar. Mm. And if they're not calling us, we're not working hard enough. Mm-hmm. I'll go you one uh, further, if I could, please, from my own experience. You know, I'm old. I think we've established that tonight, <laughs> thanks to <laughs> Chamberlain and That's not I'm only kidding. Don't, <laughs> kidding. Don't even go there with it. But, you know, I, I had the privilege of, of knowing Meldrick Taylor, um, world-renowned uh, championship boxer from Philadelphia. And I remember when he was at the top of his game, and um, I was doing some business consulting with him, and I was, first time in my life, blown away by the fact that the the, the biggest car dealer in Philadelphia would send him cars, meaning he wouldn't have to go down there and get one, apply for one, none of that, meaning that they would literally, hey, Meldrick, we got the latest Mercedes-Benz. We're going to have one of our drivers drop it off in front of your crib. 
<laughs> no money out of pocket. And he would drive that car as long as he wanted to. Eh, I ain't feeling this one. Okay, we'll get you another one. Don't worry. And part of that taught me, well, of course, he had a lot of money when he was champion. But they weren't asking him for his money. They were really relationship. appealing to him for his relationship, for a relationship, and, and for his social clout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which has become a well-known phrase we use nowadays, thanks to social networking, they and even more valuable than it was then. They have clout.com, too. Clout.com. You can check out your clout <laughs> on, from Facebook. Sure do. Mm-hmm. You know what? And before we, I know before we go, I'm gonna I wrap say, it out in the show, but you got time. Yeah, I want to say this because a lot of people, whenever I speak, they they walk up to me and they they tell me how much they appreciate what I'm doing and stuff. But I really truly like to put this message out there. I want people to understand that in order, I'm just the face of Wealthy Minds, but there is a organization, there is a team that I That's have right. created that is behind me that supports me from people like Chamberlain, people like Richard, because without LA Talk Live, I have no voice. Nobody hears me. Nobody hears my speeches. Without somebody booking me on a speech, I have nothing to talk about. I could have all the things in the world to talk about, mm-hmm. but you know what good is talent if nobody sees it. Mm-hmm. Right. And so like I don't want I don't want people to put me just on a pedal stool, but I want that, you to take the company and put the company on a pedal stool because I created the company for the world, for people to be inspired. And it's not just about me the billionaire PA. You know, it's just about me having this relationship with people like Chamberlain, Richard, and, you know, even Sensational Soaps. You know, I just wanted to encourage people to go after their dreams and don't never give up. Word up on that, brother. And about that pedestal comment, you know, one of my favorite old sayings, I used to remind myself of this always. And it's the reason I'm so deferential to compliments and things like that or being placed on a pedestal. I read this from Abe Lincoln. Abe Lincoln, a pedestal is as much a prison as is any small place. So when you're on a pedestal, there's not much room to grow or move around. Mm-hmm. So good point and, about and, that. And the reason, the main reason why I do that is because when you put yourself on a pedestal, you start attaining what they call an ego. Ego. And mm-hmm. when you fall, you fall by yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my team on a pedestal so Love when it. one of us falls, somebody catch, catch me. There you go. Mm-hmm. This is totally there different. Go. So, you know, I give those shots out to people like my publicist, which is Don, and my writing par- partner, which is Tiffany, because there is no Wealthy Minds without that team. Let's talk about Dawn. She writing press releases. Right now. <laughs> I'm getting them every day. Holla. Let's give her a shout. <laughs> uh, thank Dawn you. Dawn Agent. Don Agent, thank you so much for continuing to write all of the wonderful Wealthy Minds press releases. One of the best writers in the world. And she's also editing my book, Billionaire PA. Wealthy Minds by Billionaire PA. Coming out soon. Shout out to Tiffany Catching. That is my writing partner on all my music. We wrote the song Too Much Faith and produced it with the go-to guys. Wealthy. Too Much Faith. Wealthy. <laughs> Man, it was a joy to have you come by. And guess what? This was really very impromptu. Yeah. Because yeah. the billionaire stopped by. Being a billionaire, you know, he gets time to just chill out throughout his day. <laughs> see how us little people are doing. Stopped on through. And I said, hey, man, why don't you hang around? We'll come back later for uh, the New Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. We not, might have a guest fall out. We had hoped to have Sherita Herring. Might have mixed up the dates. She might be here next week. But I got to get you guys connected with her. A genius at grants. Mm-hmm. And uh, someone I want you both, both Shanta and Wealthy, to talk to. Already had a session with Chamberlain. We'll see where it goes. But she's also running for councilwoman. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get behind her to help her in that task as well. But this was very impromptu, my brother, and I really appreciate your contribution to the night show. Oh, man, it's worth it, man. You gave me a voice. Always <laughs> bring a stack of gold with you every time you come. And I don't mean physical gold, mental and spiritual gold. Mm-hmm. That's really where I'm at right now in my life and the skin I'm in. You know, if I get rich doing what I do, you know, praise God. If I don't, I've had the best time <laughs> of my life. Right. You yeah, know, and many. that's yeah. what matters most. You can't to me. take it with you, man. You All know, you can do really. is just, you know, live live your life and go after the things that you think are most valuable to you. Yeah. And you know, your values. In the documentary, I've gotta turn you guys on to it. There was a segment of this documentary with Jimmy Carter, great president in his time, a one term president, unfortunately, because I think he could have done so much more for the con the, the country, said 
in an emergency in an emergency message that America's obsession with greed, wealth, and self-aggrandizement would 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 meet with dire circumstances in the future. Now, you know, Jimmy Carter mid 70s, and sure enough, throughout the mid or the late 2000s, late millennium here, late late 2000s, I should say, we've certainly come to terms with our with America's obsession with greed and self-aggrandizement the world is changing now I see that so very clearly and I think what touched a part of me about that documentary and why I wanted to speak so uh, fervently about it tonight was the fact that as an older gentleman I've watched this country change in many ways never thought that I would see a black man being president um, what I look forward to next is seeing a woman and a Mexican and a Latino being president. I want to see this country change and diversify completely. And it does matter to me uh, who's in charge, what race, what ethnic background, uh, what their gender is, because that's true diversity. When in the highest office of power in this country, you can have different people making decisions for the welfare of us as a whole true diversity to me is not that it's going to be always a man president or a white president or the next black president or you know but all diversity encompassing all of what this country is all about so that does matter to me forgive me as we've clearly delineated tonight i am old <laughs> but my aspirations are for what martin luther king talked about a country where all of us understand that none of us picked our color, our size, or what we look like. That we were born into this, but that we made the most of our lives and contributed to society individually and as a whole to the best that we could as individuals. That's what really my whole rant was all That's about. Well, well said, Rich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well said, man. Uh, who can disagree with that, you know? I disagree with that. Are you having a heart attack? Is that why you grabbed me? <laughs> no, I'm just, Are you feeling I'm, me I'm, deep I'm inside? I'm so touched, man. It was a heartfelt conversation yeah. tonight yeah. for two hours yeah. of wealthiness and motivation <laughs> and, and sensational give, soaps. Give, <laughs> give it up for yourself, Richard, for, uh, for being a, a great host yeah. of the show. And it's Thank good that I'm glad you have an opinion. I wish more people would have an opinion. Mm. You know, and that's, that's a big problem right now. Is, okay, if you insist. You know, <laughs> you have an opinion. And that's, that's part of the problem is people's their lack of engagement in the political process. Mm -hmm. And then they, then they complain when they're not and they can't uh, get a job or they can't start a company or they can't do whatever. It's you're not engaged in anything. So, you know, like I said, pick a passion and go with it. You know, find out what things are going to matter to you. Not even on the on the political the federal level, yeah, but even exactly. on the local yeah, level exactly. here. Right? You know, and find out, find out a path that you can kind of give back to and just, just get involved. Get involved. get involved you know all right so some closing comments will comprise of your contact information wealthy minds the billionaire ba himself give it to him oh man i'm i'm a, i got my new motivational speech my next motivational speech coming up on october the 27th in pasadena we're gonna teach people how to get in, gear. get in gear get in now dot com go there man and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna encourage you to get in gear speak your dreams into existence uh my company's clothing line is wealthymindsclothing.com but before you do anything I'm wealthy minds right now go on the internet download too much faith T-O-O -O, much faith and remember you can never have too much faith never ever too much faith <laughs> ever never <laughs> wealthy shout out to Hanani Taylor for singing the song in Elijah Lou yeah. wealthy no say doubt. it with me why don't you <laughs> wealthy <laughs> All right. anyway Chamberlain Duru hey folks uh, whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. before you even go there okay wonderful job with the young people this weekend the chamber of commerce does this every year my second year going to my second year in the, bu in the building mm -hmm. the paradise building sponsoring all the young people uh from elementary school to come out and paint the, the building uh, right the windows on the building did yeah. you see this this no. as you pulled in it's, no. it's, right, it's right oh yes i did don't get yeah. into an accident but as you drive out <laughs> these kids come by with the most amazing i thought i was at the wrong visions. building uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever that yeah so big ups to the chamber of yeah, we also round have round of yeah thanks for, for that definitely gotta uh give a great kudos out to christina davis my boss chamber of commerce christina uh, davis no christina christina, christina davis. davis um and then 
the real big sponsor behind that is Drawlinger Properties. Drawlinger is when it really fuels that every year, um, you know, with our community, immediate community here, we have a big belief in business and education uh, kind of coming together. So it's a great thing that we do, that we do every year. And uh, yeah, the kids did a great job this year, as they always do. Uh, so the the paintings are along the pole of the corridor and the parkway, and which is a triangle. And so if, as you're going to the airport, don't crash your car if you see those uh, great paintings there on the uh, <laughs> on the side. But um, that's LAX Coastal Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you can reach me at Chamberlain at LAX Coastal. Uh, dot com. Our number is 310-645-5151. Our website is laxcoastal.com. We are the best chamber out there on the west side of Los Angeles. So if you want to get involved, check out our website, look at our calendar, give me a call directly. I'd be happy to talk to you about getting your business off the ground. I love to, uh, consulting with small companies and upstart entrepreneurs. Uh, so that's what we're all about. So get up, get down, and get engaged, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you need to do that's nowadays. Right. Chamberlain, thank you so much, man. Thank you, man. We really missed you last week. The discussion was about passion, mm -hmm. and I want to thank both of you brothers, and then we're going to swing to Mr. Shanta Hogan for uh, dealing with my rant this, this evening. <laughs> so, Shanta, the first lady of the radio board, and go ahead. This Thursday, we're having uh, chocolate and wine um, at our boutique, mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. SNS Boutique. Don't it's you want to go? It's free. It's 2618 West Manchester. Los, um, not Los Angeles, it's Inglewood, California, 90305. All right, you, you, you messed it up. Give it to them twice. I'm sorry. <laughs> SNS Boutique. SNS Boutique, 2618 West Manchester, Inglewood, California, 90305. Um, this Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. is Chocolate and Wine. Um, you mm. can reach Sensational Soaps at SensationalSoaps.com. That's S-E-N-T-S-A-T-I-O-N-A-L, Soaps. Dot com or give us a call at 1-800-216-9312. Christmas time is coming. We have mistletoe and butter cookie coming in. But um, body butter, body mess, candles. Body butter. I'm and not. Go I'm not gonna wait on Christmas. And <laughs> and and <laughs> cranberry thing. So hey baby. So. Hey baby. <laughs> body Thank butter you so me, much. First lady of the radio board. <laughs> that sounds like a bomb. Body butter? <laughs> Get your sensational soaps right now. Today. <laughs> Thank you, Macretia, McFashion. Oh, Macretia. Yeah. Hey, well, Macretia. We, yeah, we, we, uh, we got the 10 torn layers of silk ten coming out uh, the 27th and the 28th. Um, you could go to 10 T. T. Torn layers. TLS.blogspot.com and find out more about our play. It's about 10 women telling true life stories of something tragic that happened in their life and how, to, how they have overcame them. So we hope to see you there. I'm about, indeed, to, I'm about to get a wealthy soap. I want a wealthy soap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One that smells Wash like money. Wash existence. Wash <laughs> 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 I got four new. I got three new business partners. <laughs> the genius never Watch ends. My dream. <laughs> going down today. Watch that uh, <laughs> failure off your body. Watch that dream to twist. First, first thing in the morning, man. The genius. Let me wash these dreams in real quick. <laughs> Nobody uh, going to work. Uh, with, a, with a big tall glass of hustle juice and tea to go That's with hilarious. it. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, you for joining. Go anywhere. Us. <laughs> you can do anything with that, man. I'm telling Smell you. Smell like success. <laughs> Uh, thanks for joining us here tonight on the New Entrepreneurs We Summit in the Radio Boardroom. I'm your host and humble uh, host and general manager of LA Talk Live. Signing off for tonight. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to tune in next fr next Monday at 5 p.m. I've had such a nice time. I think I'm ready to go. Thank you guys for joining me. I'll see you next week. Be sure to stay tuned. Coming up next at 8 p.m. Keep it real with the cousins and big. Be sure to put them babies to bed because it does get kind of R-rated. But it's a great show. Be sure to stay tuned. We'll see you later. So people get ready. There's a train of coming. You don't need no baggage. You just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesel's humming. You just thank the Lord. We know there are many choices of internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating.